Hello, this is Skim. I'm Scott. I'm Kim. And we're going to go over uh, a teaching. It's actually originally by Josh McDowell. It's called The Seven A's of Relationship. It's something that we found to be very, very helpful in our relationships with each other and with our children. And so we thought we'd throw this out there as an important kind of teaching that really helped us. So we throw it out there for you guys. And if you want more information and more detailed information, of course, go to Josh McDowell for the full teaching. But we're going to give you an overview and just a basic understanding. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So with that, what is the idea behind seven A's? Uh, well, there's uh, seven words that begin with A. And these are all um, things that I guess would be... A tr Types of communication. <laughs> I'm like having a hard time saying something right now. <laughs> the idea is uh, we have different ways of communicating with each other. Like, for example, for myself, um, I was always given words of instruction, especially with my kids. Do this. Hey, do this. Do it this way. Always words of in instruction, words of instruction. That was the only way I was communicating. And that was basically driving a wedge, I believe, between me and my kids. So what 7 A's does is it helps you to communicate in a lot of different ways that are very helpful and actually um, build relationship and closeness and connectivity instead of uh, just speaking in one way and one way only. Would you say that's a good, a fair explanation? Yes, I just couldn't get it out. <laughs> okay. So what's the first A? These are all words that start with A, but... The, that's just to remind you mm -hmm. uh, the different kinds so that you can communicate in this way. And the first one is affirmation. Mm -hmm. So affirmation. So basically it says we give a sense of authenticity and validation to a person's individuality and their feelings. Right. Mm -hmm. Even when we don't understand it. Right. So there can be times where, like for instance, you're into CrossFit. I definitely don't get CrossFit. I don't like to exercise. Um, but you were recently in a uh, competition, and I was all excited. I got him like different outfits and bought you all kinds of stuff for it, and um, try, you know just tried to affirm you that even though maybe I don't understand why you what you get out of it or mm -hmm. um, why you even like it, yeah. I try to just validate the fact that you you like it. And that you, you know, you think mm -hmm. it's important. Yeah, so we can affirm uh, and use affirming speech when we're talking to um, our spouse or even our children. And this is a, a great way to kind of start turning that relationship around and building connectivity mm -hmm. is through affirmation. Mm -hmm. Affirmation. Okay. So let's move to the sec second one, and that is acceptance. Mm -hmm. So acceptance. So that when we give acceptance, we give a sense of security. And um, basically we say we love you no matter what. Even if you do something that's bad or wrong, um, we just accept you as who you are as an individual. Right. So it's not based upon what you do. It's just based upon who you are. Yeah, and this is important. Um, you know, not that we wink or, you know, not pay attention to stuff that's done that's inappropriate. However... We don't want to tie uh, our affection to um, acts of service or even doing well or doing bad because mm -hmm. then that can become a, like a performance-based type of economy and um, that's not what we want to promote. We want to promote that you're special, that you've been made by God with, as Josh says, uh, infinite dignity, value, and worth. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you know you're a good piano, a good piano player, or a mediocre one, or one who's struggling. It doesn't matter. Love you anyway, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll encourage you to be the best you can be. But that's not what your values tied to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think for me, I had a hard time with acceptance because I came from a family where everything was based upon my performance and what I did. So. I think I had a very hard time, you know, giving you acceptance and even giving my children acceptance unconditionally. You know, I think a lot of it was based upon uh, performance and mm -hmm. what they did. So, yeah, it, it's, it can be hard. Yeah, I think we've all experienced that if we're honest, that 
many times uh, we feel like our acceptance is definitely tied to our performance. Mm -hmm. If you do good, then things between us are going to be great. Especially in a marriage, right? Yeah. 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 Do what I want. Do it the way I want. When I want. We're going to get along well. Mm -hmm. But boy, the moment you don't, then there's repercussions. So yeah. that breaks down that idea. So let's look at the, the next one. And the next one is appreciation. Mm -hmm. So for appreciation, we give a sense of significance. And it's it's basically, I think, a cornerstone. Like um, he, Josh was saying that acceptance is a foundational thing, but this is the cornerstone of that foundation. And so uh, basically you're giving value um, on their accomplishments and that they make a difference. So this is actually something where you appreciate what they do. Yeah. So it's recognizing uh, what they're doing and, and then verbalizing that appreciation. Mm -hmm. That's different because, um, again, a lot of times growing up, I know that I experienced like if I was doing a good job, going to school, going to work, whatever, whatever, um, that was just your job. That's what you're supposed to do. There was never any words of, or normally there was never any words of appreciation. Like, you know what? You do a good job. You know what? The fact that you get up and you go to work on time and that you're dependable and you're a good kid. You know what? I just really appreciate that. I think many times we get caught up in kind of that cycle of, no, that's just normal. Uh, that's your job. That's what you're supposed to do. And you, you, I'm not going to give you anything for that. You know, that's just normal and that's it. Um, so, but we want to, we want to step back and make sure that we're saying, Hey, no, no, we, we, we do appreciate you. And the fact that you are, um, you know, making efforts to be obedient or follow the Lord or, you know, or when it comes to your spouse, I think even in the, in the everyday mundane stuff like housework, you know, I think a lot of times that has a tendency to just kind of get unnoticed mm -hmm. or the fact that if you go to work and you work hard and you, you know, pay the bills you know, we're not in naturally inclined to just constantly be saying, oh, I appreciate that, you know, right. where I think we need to, we need to appreciate yeah. those different. Yeah. Cause it gets so mundane. It's like, well, yeah, the lights are on and, uh, you, you take it for granted mm -hmm. and you just get into your rut a routine of life and you lose appreciation for some of the smaller things. Yeah. Uh, I can give you an example of when Kim did this and it really meant a lot. She had, um, I'd gone out for something, but when I came back, there was a paper towel on the floor that she had written a note out on the paper towel. And she was just saying how much she appreciated me and, and the fact that um, I was able to provide and that she has a lifestyle that she really appreciates and, and so forth. And it really meant a lot that she took the time to express appreciation. Even though it was on a paper towel? With a Sharpie. <laughs> That I could hardly read. It's all, it's the only thing I could find because uh, I had to run out real quickly. But It was legible. That's all that mattered. <laughs> I could read what she said. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. All right. So the next one we're looking at affection. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, affection right here. Yeah. So uh, with affection, we give a sense of lovability, expressing through love, um, loving words and appropriate touch communicates they are worth loving. Okay. And I think that's, again, very important. And depending on what kind of a family you were brought up in, I, I was not raised in a family that you did a whole lot of hugging and kissing and stuff like that. So I, you know, I'm not, I wasn't used to that when you and I got married. Mm -hmm. And then also, again, it's, it's something that I've had to grow in and try to, um, you know, change because that's not my natural default. Yeah. And I still, I, I think, you know, even my one daughter said that I'm not the most, like, affectionate, you know. And it, I, it's not because I don't love love people. It's just I don't show it you know, in that way. And I, and I think that what, that's what happens. I mean, if you don't naturally have these things modeled for you and you've never seen that before, you've never mm -hmm. experienced that, then you're, how do you even know to do it? Yeah. So, like, I'm the opposite. Uh, my mom mm -hmm. was very affectionate, like... She always wanted to rock me. Like, mm -hmm. even when I got older, I remember being like 14, 15, 16 years old. And she's like, come here, boy. I want to <laughs> rock you. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing my mom's a big, strong woman. She could take it. But, uh, yeah, I remember being rocked in a rocking chair well into my teens. And I think even to an adulthood. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I always appreciated it because I knew that was mom's way of showing affection and it was great. Yeah. And that's what builds that feeling of value, dignity, worth is when people express themselves in these different ways. Mm -hmm. So even if we've never had that really modeled for us, um, perhaps we can become a student of appropriate touching and affection and, and begin to um, attempt that even though it might feel really awkward at first. Yeah, and I was going to say is um, I have, you know, scripture references for all these. I actually didn't didn't say it for each one, but I will I will put it in the description below. Um, but that's I mean, that's who our person that we should model is Jesus. You know, how did he treat others? How did he love others? He, he's a he's the best example. Yeah. As far as if, if you didn't have a good um, representation of that growing up, that's where you would find it is the perfect um the perfect way of doing it. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move to the next one, which is availability. Mm -hmm. So and we get, yeah. tell us a little bit about availability. Okay. So we give a sense of importance. If we if we don't, in essence, we are saying other things come before you. Mm -hmm. um, and I, again, this is this is a huge one. I think uh, people think even if they're there physically, but they're not there mentally and emotionally. It's 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 not. Um, People don't feel like you love them, you know, when you're there, even if you're physically there. Yeah. So the worst side of this, like this is probably one of the things I have the most regret about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in my relationship with, with Kim and also my children is when I was younger, I was just like a workaholic. I worked all the time. And then I was also super involved in ministry. So my availability was very limited. Mm -hmm. And looking back on it, I think you know, even subconsciously, my, my children receive that as not, you know, the not being available. They receive that as, as they weren't important, that work was more important, that ministry was more important, which is not the truth. But mm -hmm. I can certainly see how that was conveyed, and I have regret about that. And I think that's also why you see the, the term a PK or a preacher's kid. A preacher's kid, it's very stereotypical, but it's very true. Many times ministers get so involved in ministry that the kids are like, yeah. you love this church. You love these church people more than me. And and uh, it, it's a, it kind of plants a seed of bitterness. So I think this availability one is probably my Achilles heel, certainly. And uh, I want to make sure that I'm more and more available. And like Kim was talking about, um, I can be sitting at the table having a meal, quote unquote, with my family and not even be present. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking about work. I'm still thinking about the dozen things I've got to do. And uh, so you can be physically present and be completely out to lunch and not available at all. So mm -hmm. I think these are the things we really have to watch out for. Yeah. And I think just even doing little simple things, like at one point we would say no phone, you know, no cell phones at the table. Um or you know limiting that because I think unfortunately cell phones do they're even more now I think taking over you know our um, what do you call it our just our focus and just um, mm -hmm. our world yeah it just yeah. it's becoming <clears throat> oh, I, you know and it's addictive it's addictive yeah. you know so now we're we're focused on the gadget in our hand instead of each other and mm -hmm. it, it has has a tendency to limit our availability um, in a psychological sense we could be physically there but just mentally we're gone yeah. so let's let's pay attention to that mm -hmm. um, the the next one is approach their world okay so when we approach the, their world we give a sense of that we care about them and what they are interested in um, and this is something that you need to study your spouse. You need to study your kids, whoever it is that you're trying to approach their world. You need to kind of see what they're interested in um, and try to step into their world. Like for instance, um, Scott, he's now, he's, he's always loved football and I've never been a football person. And unfortunately through our whole marriage, I've never have shown a lot of interest, but like the other day he was watching football and I still am not interested, but I was sitting on the couch with him and you know, and every once in a while I would interact and ask him like questions, but you know, I was doing my own little thing as well. I was looking at, I think, looking up um, RVs on my, on my phone. But you know, I think again, it's one of those things where you may not be interested in it. You may not understand it, but if you're trying to learn 
about them and trying to approach what they're interested mm -hmm. in, that shows them, okay, you actually care. Right. And what's what's kind of fun is like uh, I didn't know anything about motorcycles and Scott's you know he's always liked motorcycles and he actually bought one several years back and I you know rode on it and I actually ended up liking it so that was kind of a nice surprise so again you know try to broaden your horizons because there might be things that you're missing out on that you don't think you're gonna like and then you end up liking it and then it causes a bond between the two of you yeah so like an example in my case was uh, Kim loves to go to estate sales and uh, I didn't get that. I don't like shopping, um, but well, I don't like shopping either, but, <laughs> but it, she loves estate sales and uh -huh. garage sale and, yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, so I thought, you know what? Um, she really enjoys this. Let me approach her world. I'm going to go with her. Um, I'm going to learn about this stuff and see what it's all about. And, you know, so at first, you know, it was. You know, I didn't know anything, didn't really appreciate it. But then as I started to see the value in it and experience it, and, and I think that sent her a message to say, hey, he cares enough about me that he wants to spend time with me, and he knows I enjoy this, so mm -hmm. now he's coming with me. So I think that sends a strong message that you yeah. care about that person, that they have value, that they have worth. Mm -hmm. And so again, that's how this all plays together. All these A words and all these actions and activities all send a message that they are valuable, mm -hmm. and that you care and that you love them. So. And the last one? The last one is accountability. And that's super important, you know? Yeah. Because um, again, we can't just do the other ones and not have accountability. Um, because it's, it's the same idea of like all love and no truth is hypocrisy. And then all truth and no love is brutality. So you can't just do all the nice things with, you know, affirmation, acceptance, appreciation, affection, availability, and approaching the world without accountability. Yeah. And with accountability, we give a sense of responsibility. We need to balance all those other A's with loving limits and boundaries. Yeah. And again, um, how does that tie into feeling loved and that you have value? And it's, it might not be immediately understandable. It's kind of counterintuitive. But think about it. If I just said, yeah, honey. You can go run the clubs every night. You can, go, you know, go drink and you know, drug whatever. Yeah, that's cool with me. You know, it's like what I'm sending there is a message that I don't care about her at all. Mm -hmm. Just go ruin your life. Go do whatever you want, mm -hmm. and and that's okay with me. Yeah, that that sends a strong message that I don't care about her at all. So yeah, those are things that are not good for me. Just like with kids, you know, kids need boundaries. They need limitations to feel secure. Mm -hmm. If you just let a kid go wild, they and Deep inside, they may not be able to verbalize it, but they know they don't feel loved by their parent if they're just given like not, yeah. no rules or anything. Yeah, back in um, when we did youth ministry, mm -hmm. you know, we always knew uh, and we could see that the kids who really struggled the most were the ones that had no rules and they knew the kid, their parents didn't care about them and mm -hmm. they would just go off the rails and, and you know they were actually deeply hurt by the fact that there weren't rules and loving accountability in their life so mm -hmm. so with that that's that's the seven A's this is a brief summary a brief yeah. summary yeah. again but it's very important to know that like rules and regulations without relationship equals rebellion mm -hmm. okay and again that's Josh's mantra mm -hmm. and we have found that to be true so we want to build this loving um, communication and accountability uh, so that you know once it comes to the accountability part mm -hmm. it's accepted because they already know it's that the reason that we're even holding them accountable is because we love them mm -hmm. not because we're jerks not because we're tyrants not because we're trying to lord it over them no you know we're working within the confines of this loving connectivity so that when it's time to hold each other accountable it's like Oh yeah, they, they do that because they care and mm -hmm. it's, it's received as such. Yeah, yeah. And um, we're gonna put the link to Josh's um, full uh, yeah, there's a teaching. teaching on it. And he actually has like um, worksheets and just videos and stuff like that, so. Um. All right, so with that, that is the seven A's of relationship. I hope you check it out, go deep on it. It really helped us in our lives. 
So we just wanted to give that testimony. And let us know if you guys implement this, you know, how, how it goes for you. And Yeah, let us know in the comments. What's uh, some good feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, God bless you guys. That is Skim. Well, signing off. We'll talk to you guys later.